this was going to be my second video in a series on secular morality. However, after reading through some of the comments on my last upload, I've decided against it. In its place, what I've decided to do is to convert my whole channel into a sports commentary channel. Uh, we might discuss weather patterns, global warming, certainly reality television, gossip, that sort of thing. Kidding, of course. <laughs> uh, after reading through some of the comments on my last upload, I realized that we're going to have to take this pretty slow. Obviously, it would be naive and very, very arrogant to assume that we could wrap this thing up real quick when, you know, this is a topic that humanity has struggled with um, since we've been able to conceptualize things like morality. So, you know, I think we're going to need to take it slow, get start with the basic definitions and work our way from there. So I'm going to clarify a few things as to what I intended to say in the last video, and then we'll leave that into the comments section and, and discuss it there, and then I can review that before I make the next video. Now, when I made my last video, uh, I was called to task on some of the terms I used, and I did use some terms sloppily. I, it wasn't really meant to be my beginning video on secular morality anyway. I was really just trying to have a commentary on Tim's video. Um, and so I apologize for that, because it caused, I think, a little bit of grief in the comments section. When I say objective morality, I'm not speaking of a species-specific set of preferences by majority sort of thing. Uh, I'm speaking of what I'm hoping is a rational, almost, uh, almost axiomatic proof of objective morality. So objective meaning independent of your particular or an individual's opinion or wishes on the subject. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't know if it exists, but I think it would provide the most utility for us because it would be easily transferable, teachable, and uh, universal, which I think is another key component of, a, of an ethical system. I think it's got to be universal to all peoples. I think once you have uh, exceptions, it no longer serves as, as an ethical system. I think it's then just a set of rules for one group and a different set of rules for another group. And so that's what I mean when I say objective morality. So I'll be a little bit more clear about it when I speak about it in the future. Uh, you could call it moral realism. Um, and I do believe it needs to be universal. Now. Let, let's, you know, help me define some of these terms in the comment section, and then we'll review that for the next video. But I do have a couple other things that I want to discuss. Uh, now, the first is argumentation. And there has been a little bit of friction in the comments of my last video. Not bad, though. I mean, certainly not as bad as I've seen. But I, and, and I think friction is fine. A disagreement is cool. Uh, disagree with me? I'm totally okay with that. I've learned the most things in my life over disagreements, so I'm cool with that. But let's keep the ad hominem attacks out of it, let's keep the personal attacks out of it and stick to a rational discourse. If you're button heads with somebody and you can't get anywhere, then disengage, move on to someone else. Um, also, when it comes to argumentation, if you're gonna make a case for something, please back it up. Um, I have made a comment uh, saying something to the effect that we are moral agents and uh, someone had commented back and said that's a meaningless term but that was it it was just sort of a dismissive comment and no no backup behind it and so I think if you're going to do that I'm cool with that but back it up right because I don't know what you even mean by it's a meaningless term because it's not meaningless if you break it into its constituent parts each has a meaning you put them together that has a meaning now maybe maybe the person meant it was meaningless uh, in that it was redundant or something, or it was obvious or, or something, you know what I mean, rather than, than it actually didn't mean anything. So again, I don't mind if you disagree with me or anyone else, but just back it up. We're supposed to be the group that, that backs up our, our assertions, right? We're not that other group that doesn't do that. So um, let's keep the rational discourse to that if we can. I mean, do whatever you want. To me, the, the comments section is a public space, so do whatever you want. But I mean, obviously, if we're going to have a meaningful discourse, then let's, let's do that. The final thing I want to say before I sort of let the comments section do what it's going to do and, and I'll communicate with, you know, with people in there and then make the next video, uh, I did want to say that I'd like to leave out the lifeboat scenarios if we can. I think that those, you know, when someone says, you know, is rape absolutely wrong and then an atheist will sort of dance around that they won't answer that 
question. I think it's because they're getting bogged down in the lifeboat scenarios. Saying, well, I can't say it's absolutely wrong because I don't know every possible scenario, so how can I say it's absolutely wrong? Um, I think if you define, first of all, if you define morality correctly, you don't have to worry about all the lifeboat scenarios because those are different situations. So, you know, the, the whole concept of like, you know, rape a baby uh, and save the planet or, you know, uh, those sort of things. There's several reasons why I don't think that they're that they serve us any utility and and that they're not even applicable to this conversation. The first is they they generally don't happen, right? So it doesn't do us a lot of good to focus. I mean, in those in the comments section of my last upload, there's a lot of talk about these different things, but it doesn't serve us well when that's almost those those situations never happen, right? The majority of rapes and murders follow a pretty standardized pattern of, you know, one person, we're not talking about saving the planet, I'm coming to rape you, you know, because uh, um, because that's what I feel like doing, and your consent doesn't matter to me, I'm going to get my fulfillment, and your fulfillment be damned, I don't care if you're harmed. That's the majority of rape cases, right, like the vast, vast majority. So, those situations tend to not happen. Secondly, and maybe even more importantly, those are not moral scenarios anyway, right? Morality has to do with a choice between a right and a wrong action, or a good and an evil action. And maybe we can, maybe you can help me with the definitions of good and good and evil, right and wrong, and we'll move on from there. But I think everybody kind of knows what I mean, that morality is about a choice in a situation between a right and a wrong action. When someone offers you two choices, both immoral, you're not in a moral situation. And so morality is not in play there. Um, not on your part anyway. And so that gets me to the next point. When we talk about these moral, these lifeboat scenarios, we generally are focusing on the wrong individual. So if someone was to say, kidnap a family and come to you and say, rape this baby or I kill the family. If you rape the baby, I'll let everyone go. And everyone says, moral or immoral to rape the baby? Well, you're focusing on the wrong agent here because you're not in a position of, of, of being a moral agent anymore. You've been given two immoral choices. Morality is not an issue. Everybody's focusing on the wrong individual. The focus should be on the individual who's holding the family hostage and telling you to rape the baby. They are the moral agent because they are the ones with the choice to do something moral or immoral. So I really would like to stay away from these lifeboat scenarios. I don't think they serve us well. And a final thing I'll say about that is, again, morality is about a choice between a right and a wrong action. But it's not about controlling people. Because if it was, then all we'd have to do is develop a moral system and then we're finished. We've controlled everybody. No, it's about suggesting right and wrong actions in a given situation. And so if we have people who We've established a moral framework. We're still going to have people that operate outside of that moral framework and do immoral things. And that's why we have a legal system. And those lifeboat scenarios fall under that legal system. We appoint people and elect people to look at these individual cases and say, okay, well, there were extenuating circumstances. This person was not presented with a moral option, only two immoral options. Let's suss out how to deal with that. Right? So the moral question is not about controlling people's actions. So when you're talking about the guy standing at the, at the switching mechanism and the train is coming, there's a family of five over here and a homeless guy over there, do you, you know, do you, is it ethical to throw the switch and all that? Morals aren't going to control that guy's decision most likely. Impulse probably will, and we're going to have to employ some people after the fact to assess what are the implications of his actions. So I'd like to stay away from those. I think they bog the conversation down. The conversation is too important to bog it down with those things that really don't involve moral choices anyway. So uh, I'd be interested to know what people think on that because it seems like every time we get discussing morality, everyone immediately goes there. And in a way, I understand Tim's frustration in the Monica Cora video that he did, you know, and videos prior where he's talking to other people because he's talking about rape overall, in general. And the people he's talking to, now he's being disingenuous because he's not, he's, not, he's not acknowledging what they're getting bogged down in. 
but they're they're saying I can't say absolute because I can't imagine every possible scenario. I, I don't have that kind of I don't have the intellect to pull that off, right? To imagine every possible scenario, and that's why I think those things don't serve us any utility whatsoever. And so uh, I'll leave it at there for now. I'm going to upload this video. Let me know what you think. Uh, hopefully we can start from there. I really, really, really enjoyed the conversations that are taking place on that last upload um, regarding secular morality. And I think this is the topic to go into. Yes, this is the, the video that I was worried about making or the, the, the series that I was worried about making. When I was talking about setting my own YouTube channel on fire, I feel a little silly about that now, but uh, you know, I didn't want to start a bunch of conflict, but it's going to happen, right? I mean, this is this is one of those issues that can be divisive. So let's try not to let it be too too divisive. Let's treat each other well and let's let's explore this territory. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to clarify a couple of things before I upload this video. Uh, first off, I'm aware I've probably already started some issues. Uh, I wish I had copy and paste for video editing. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, I could go through and replace words I've misused with something else after the fact. That'd be great. Uh, throughout the video, I kept using the phrase, the terms uh, morally right and wrong actions. And I realize this probably isn't the best terminology to use. It's something I've always struggled with when it comes to morality because I feel like Good and evil are terms that just carry too much baggage with them, and morally preferred or preferable behavior just seems too soft. It doesn't seem to carry the weight that moral actions like rape and murder would really deserve. Um, maybe someone can help. Maybe that's one of the first terms we can go over, and, and just let me know what you think. The other thing is, uh, I forgot to mention absolutes. Now, when I mentioned, you know, my first video, I talked about, you know, absolutes, uh, absolute morality. And Tim, in his video, asks, you know, the question, is rape absolutely wrong? And I think it's important to note that certain actions, by definition, are absolutely immoral. Um, and when we come to some of these lifeboat scenarios or these weird circumstances where somebody might say, well, there's this you know, strange set of circumstances where rape might be permissible, I think what we're really talking about there is lesser of evils. But these aren't actually moral choices. And so I think it's important to recognize that certain actions are absolutely immoral by definition. The final thing, final thing I'll say, and then I'm going to upload this, um, is that I think it's important that we make sure we, we distinguish between aesthetics and morality. And I don't think that's going to be an issue given the discussions I'm seeing in the comments section of my video, but I think it's important that we make sure we make that distinction. And even when it comes to morality, for now I think it's best if we deal with the big three, the rape, murder, and theft, um, or property crimes, which you know is probably a better term than theft because you don't have to steal, take someone's property to deprive them of it, right? But I think it's best if we stick to those. They provide the simplest framework for us to build off of, and uh, at least until we build, you know, work out some kind of a consensus, and then we can move off from there to sort of more gray area type um, situations. So I'll leave it at that for now. I'm going to get this video uploaded, and then uh, we'll let my beating in the comment section commence. Thanks for watching.